Hi, so in this tutorial I want to show you how we can um, add some enemy aircraft against which we can uh, fire our rockets from the turret at. Um, so I've just created a simple scene here. I've added three battleships and attached our turret from tutorial part two uh, to the battleship. And when you play the game it looks a bit like this. So we have some incoming enemy aircraft that we need to try to hit. And and that's pretty much the idea. I'm not a very good shot. Let me try again. Okay, that was easy. Yeah, so, so that's what we're trying to achieve uh, in this tutorial. And it's kind of fun actually. I spend a lot of time playing it and not really that much time coding. I just need to, um, to practice a bit more, I think. Anyway, uh, so I'll stop that now and show you how uh, I put this together. Um, right, so the ship is a model I pulled from uh, Turbo Squid, uh, just like the turret model we got the last time. I looked for warship. You could look for battleship or um, destroyer. And again, there's some free models here. If you sort by lower prices, you'll find them at the top. Uh, I, I actually picked one here, which is great. Um, uh, it's not free, uh, but for me it was worth it. So. Uh, you can pick whatever you want. Um, uh, just try to pick one which is 3DS or um, or Blend, um, something which is easily imported into Blender. That's important. Um, so in Blender then, you use the file import menu, import the format you've downloaded. Um, and mine was 3DS, so it, it imports and looks like this. You'll notice that it's it's got lots of parts to it. Um, so if I press A and deselect everything and if I right click on any part you'll see that there's really quite a lot of detail here but for our purposes we don't need all those parts to be separated so I'll select everything by again clicking A twice and I'll press Ctrl J to join all that geometry into one piece of geometry okay so that's what we have now and then I can export it export as an FBX file like we showed before so if you're not sure what to do there, I did an example back in um, in the part two. Okay, and once you have your uh, FBX file, you can use the, the uh, import from FBX uh, menu to bring it into um, Lumberyard. So that's how we brought in the um, the battleship. Uh, it's a CGF file, which you can then place in your scene wherever you want and scale it and rotate it uh, appropriately. Um, I then took our prefab. So let me just show you that again. Let me go to the back of the ship um, and place. You, you typically, it's important to, to make a copy of your controller if you're going to change it, so at least you have your original still. Um, that's why I've got so many copies here. So let me just show you an example again. I'll bring this guy, this robot, over onto the back of the ship. That's the robot. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. Let me just uh, change the time of day setting so we can see this better. Let's move it over to something more like midday. And then we can hopefully see what we're doing a bit more easily. So... Yeah, the robot's in there, it's kind of small. Move them back, move them over. And then we need to move them up. And uh, we go back again. There he is. Okay, so um, I think the, the idea I showed before was that you can open the prefab using the open button here to then select any part of the prefab 
uh, and you can change the mesh for it and and to do the turret on the ship I basically uh, simply clicked on the robot body right clicked and deleted it um, for the robot head uh, we um, we changed the mesh to be the mesh of the turret as I showed you in the second part of the tutorial and in order to make sure that this doesn't move um, I, I also uh, right clicked on the awesome sphere which is a rigid body um, entity if you right click on that and delete that too then when we spawn into the game we can rotate the turret and we can see uh, around us but we won't be able to move uh, which is which is fine we don't want to move the turret on the ship so it just shows you um, the steps it took to to get the turret um, uh, on the ship okay so just going to delete that now okay so for the airplane again I got a model from the web uh, again this was from turbo squid um, import into blender uh, this time I needed to use cryblend um, to export not only the mesh the CGF file but also um, a proxy mesh which is then used uh, for collision detection in the game because obviously when you send a projectile at the uh, aircraft if you don't have um, a physics representation for the aircraft then uh, you can't detect collisions and uh, cause the explosion so uh, there's plenty of tutorials on cryblend elsewhere so i'm not going to go into detail this is the setup if you want to if you want to copy it then it's basically a cylinder for the proxy mesh for the physics mesh um, and that's the uh, airplane mesh itself a simple model um, so they, they're the the pieces uh, if you look at the code um, again it's not much that needed to change the, the file I made the changes in is called gameplay sample game .cpp. Um, and it's inside a function called on system event and the idea is that when um, we enter into the game we want to spawn the enemies and the code is exactly the same code we use for spawning projectiles it's just at this time I'm using a different model for the airplane so if you don't have a model like the airplane for testing you can use the sphere um, the primitive sphere dot cgf file which is provided um, or whatever other model you want and so I just loop through the number of enemies which is the number I, I provide as a, as a const int you know it could be 30 or 50 enemies and then we spawn at positions which are random numbers in the x y and z directions that's what this code is uh, so initial position is then some random initial position for each of the aircraft and then you just spawn each one and I'm, I'm using an array of entities uh, to capture the uh, the aircraft um, the only other thing I changed so that's basically all the code that needed to add uh, to spawn the entities when you start the game again it's inside this function here and it's like it's like what we did before for the projectiles uh, obviously the difference here is that the velocity is um, not along the direction that the camera is facing it's just some other velocity for example I have it coming along the y-axis so it's spawning somewhere in the horizon and coming at the uh, at the ship um, in a straight line um, I also updated or, or added some code in the update function here so this function gets called every frame and uh, I just maintain that constant speed so I continue to apply same speed here the same velocity um, each each frame so that prevents the aircraft from from falling into the sea with, with gravity if I just gave it initial velocity and didn't continue to update the velocity then it would fall with gravity into the sea so that's why I, I, uh, I put the code in the update function here I also check um, if the aircraft has moved too far in the other direction we reset its position back to the starting position so that's the code 
um, something in the update function to, to maintain the speed and to check uh, how far the aircraft has gone. And again, down in the uh, on system event function, we basically spawn an array of entities. Um, and that's it. The rest was covered in the part two of the tutorial. We'll just give it one more go here. I'll just change the time of day back to night time. I prefer that. And start the game and see if I can hit a few more. Apparently not. Okay, so that's it. I hope it's helpful. Um, any questions, let me know in the forum and I'll, I'll do my best to, uh, to help out. Okay, bye.